I just want to thank you guys so much for everybody's comments and for all the support and best wishes uh, going forwards with my new system. I really appreciate that and I know that some of you guys have been watching for a long time and have been commenting for a long time so very very appreciative of that. There was a couple of questions so I thought I'd just race through those and uh, maybe if you have time then we'll go out and take some photos as well. I'm just gonna give shout outs to everybody who commented as well, cause I think it's really cool that you guys commented. So, uh, Connie Newland uh, is a little bit disappointed actually that I'm not doing my normal going out to find wildlife. Um, ginger photographer uh, defended me, thank you. Uh, he jumped in to say wildlife is my passion, so that won't change no matter what the gear, and that is absolutely true. Wildlife photography is my passion. Wildlife and wildlife photography is my passion, and that's always going to be what the channel is about. Uh, it's a little bit different right now because we're having the lockdown. Some of these videos are just me talking, and I totally understand that's not for everyone. Uh, so you know, just you know, just skip those videos if you don't want to watch them. Uh, but I will be back to regular schedule soon. So. Uh, let's see here, Joe Morano, any reason why I didn't come to Team Panasonic? Um, I'm, I'm actually looking at the G9 as well, it looks like a really good system. Uh, I guess I went with the Olympus because uh, I knew it, I tried it before. And there's a few wildlife photographers who I really uh, admire as well, like Yari Peltamaki, who is a great bird photographer. Uh, there's also uh, Peter Buzak. I'm butchering his name. I'll put a I'll put it up the name here as well. He's a really good photographer who's with the Olympus. I guess they swayed a little bit in that direction. Uh, and I actually really like the 300 f4. Um, to me, I have liked the I've really liked the kind of versatility of the 100 400. But I I'd rather prefer it to have uh, just the one f stop throughout, so it doesn't change up to an f five six at the most extreme end. So I'm happy enough with that, and I'll probably pick up some of the lenses in the future. Anyways, uh, Chris Martin, what software? Um, saying he uses uh, Canon DPP. I guess that's post processing software. He knows he needs to upgrade. Uh, what do you think of Lightroom? What do you think? Um, and what do I think of it for the price? Lightroom is overpriced, it's really overpriced. I've paid for it for years, and to tell you the truth, for a good few years, I didn't ha I shouldn't have paid for it at all, because I didn't use it, um, I didn't use it much. And now, I use it more, but I'm still probably not using it enough for what I'm paying for it. So if you can find some other program out there that you just pay a one-off fee and then you get that, um, unless you want to get heavily into Photoshop and everything, then I would suggest you do that. Uh, I'm not sure which ones are the good ones. I know this, like, what are they called? Skylum Pro Capture, or Capture One, or something like that. Maybe somebody else who knows who I've tried or used these can give some suggestions in the comments. Um, I don't know which one is best, but I would try out some of them, get some free versions. Um, I don't think you need Lightroom. I like Lightroom for the for the category, uh, categorization and everything, but you definitely don't need it. And especially in the beginning, until you know why you need it, then I, I, don't, think, um, I don't think you're missing out if you get something else. Uh, let's see, Brian Stark, thousand pounds a wee bit steep. Well, I looked online and it's at the cheapest I could see second hand was a thousand and fifty. So I, I don't think it was too steep. Let's see, Leah Barra, Sony will be 0.5 kilograms lighter, that might be, uh, I'm not going to get into a competition about who's got the best gear or any kind of minor technical differences. Uh, Club Dusty, he's got a heartbreak on the 7D Mark II, I know, I know, I love that lens, uh, I love that camera, I love the setup, had it for years, really like it, and um, I'm sure you'll get good use of it if that's, if that's what you have. Um, Let's see, Matt's Broden, Matt's Broden, good for you. Why not the Panasonic G9? I just replied to that. Um, Michael Sansom, very good video. What equipment do you currently use to shoot video with? Um, so basically I, I film my vlogs with the Canon M50 and basically that's that. And unfortunately, I don't know if you can see that, 
but it's a little bit bent. I had a little bit of an accident when I was on the beach uh, doing a video. So that 15 to 45 millimeter lens is actually just stuck at 16 millimeters. So <laughs> that sucks, but I haven't been able to replace it just yet because I've invested in other gear. Uh, so yeah, I'm using the Canon M50, but I might replace, I'll probably replace that in the future. And I might even get something like the Panasonic G9 because uh, you can interchange the lenses with the Micro Four Thirds system. Uh, so something like that, or maybe get uh, another OMD. Maybe I get the EM1 Mark III and use this as a backup or vlogging camera. We'll see. I really like this um, M50 actually. It's quite light, it's an easy vlogging camera. It's got the flip out screen and everything. Good autofocus, I think still, even after I've messed up the lens. Uh, uh, Camille Aubrey, hello and very good video from friends. Hello Camille, hope you're well. Uh, Greg Tilford, thanks for the update. Don't care where your camera you're shooting. Good man. He's on a Nikon and let's see. Currently shooting with the Nikon Z50. Good for you. Um, hello from Canada. Well, hello to you, Greg. Let's see. Patrick Marciniak. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I'm just going to say Patrick. Uh, he's thinking switching Nikon D7100 to Panasonic G9. A lot of people are saying it's a great system, so yeah, check with them. There's lots of people raving about it in the comments below. So everybody who's curious about a Micro Four Thirds system will be able to just follow along now my videos going ahead. Um, it's definitely not all gonna be about the gear, but obviously that's the system that I'm using. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about it, but I wanna make sure that the channel stays focused on nature and wildlife, not so much about the gear. But at least you can follow along and you can see how I get on with it. And make no mistake about it, if I can't adjust to this system, if I feel like I'm not getting the results that I hope for, that I achieved, obviously I'm going to put in the time to learn it, then uh, I have no problem with uh, going back to Canon or some other system, you know, time will tell. Let's see, awesome content. Uh, you deserve more subscribers. Thank you very much. I don't know why your name doesn't come up. Yeah, I don't know why your name doesn't come up there, but uh, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, Gil Hermey, uh, what is your experience with the Wex, Wex website? Uh, really good. Uh, I've always had really good experience with them, bought some good stuff from them, so highly recommend it. Highly recommend them, and I think some other people have commented below as well recommending them. Let's see, David Bell. He's not subscribed, and look forward to future videos. He's got the same setup. Thank you very much, David. Um, and hopefully, I'll see you more. Uh, Kai Olsen. Nice painting on the wall. Thank you very much. He's talking about the image back there, which is from Bregen in Bergen, where I'm from. Uh, when it's flooding, it rains a lot in Bergen, but it, Tide comes up as well, and bad weather will sometimes flood the pier. Anyways, uh, Dave Welfare, good luck with the new gear, thank you very much. Uh, he shoots with the Fuji X-T2, 100-400, just transferred. Um, so, I uh, really enjoy your channel and approach to wildlife photography, Dave from Canada. Hello Dave, thank you very much for that. Uh, Chris Martin, looking forward to seeing your setup. He's on the 7D Mark II with his 400, very nice. Uh, thank you. Uh, Roger Carr. So he had the Canon gear, uh, 7D Mark II, and now he's gone to Olympus as well. Uh, not, and he's not regretted it, I don't, and he doesn't think I will either. Stay safe. Thank you very much for that, Roger. You too. Brian Launchbury. Uh, welcome to the club. I think you will enjoy it for a long time. Thank you, Brian. I think I will too. Ginger Photographer, great video. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on the move. He's waiting for a Canon R5 and the RF 100 to 500. Sounds like a very, uh, that's, that'll be a very interesting system. So I'll be curious to see how you get on with that. Uh, question, what is your day job? Oh man, my day job. I don't really have a day job. Uh, basically, well, I used to be, my, my last day job is now uh, three, four years ago since I had a day job. Uh, basically, I quit my job, but then I set up my own company. Uh, I used to work as an ecologist, so I would do wildlife surveys and a lot of bird surveys. So I, I still do a bit of freelance as a, as a bird surveyor uh, in Scotland. 
So if anybody has any work out there, I'll, uh, I'll you know, look me up. So I was actually supposed to pick up some uh, bird survey work this spring from a company I used to work with. Um, but unfortunately, because of the lockdown, that's not happening. But basically, uh, I also went three, two and a half, three years ago, I went traveling and sold our house in Scotland and went traveling with the purpose of figuring out how to make money while we traveled. So that was the purpose and I kind of got the hang of it after a few years now. Uh, so now basically trying to diversify my income, make, having a diversified income with several income streams is the goal. Um, so YouTube, a tiny bit, you know, the YouTube ads doesn't really make me much money, but it opens up doors because of, um, because of visibility, because of you guys. I'm really appreciative of that. Um, I don't take it for granted uh, because, uh, because you guys subscribe, because you comments, because you like, that gives me, that opens up doors for me that gives me a little bit more exposure and sometimes I can, you know, sometimes people send me free, st free stuff to show in a video or something like that. So that's obviously really helpful. Uh, but it doesn't, you know, that what I make from YouTube ads doesn't pay the bills. Um, it's a little, it's helpful, it's a little addition to, um, is what I'm talking about, it's the diversifying income. Uh, so I've also set up a Patreon site, which is more about really, you know, getting down and gritty with uh, learning as a wildlife photographer. So going into the technical composition, and then what I think is most important actually, is more about learning field craft, uh, finding how to find wildlife and how to get close to wildlife. I think it's so important and how to, you know, doing it, doing it in an ethical and sustainable manner. Uh, so I really go into that on the Patreon site and I'll put a link to it. I appreciate everybody who signed up so far and everybody just having a look at it. I really appreciate it if you would. Um, I also, uh, so that's something that's starting to bring in a little bit more of an income. And then I also work with uh, Tragopan, which a lot of you guys have heard of. It's um, a company that makes wildlife photography hides and other gear for photographers. So. I do their YouTube channel. I come up with a video using their gear in the field and I also do some of their social media. So that's also an income for me. And on that, I do a little bit of everything to kind of make ends meet. Uh, while we've been traveling, I didn't actually have to make that much money and I don't make much, I can't say that I'm making much money now, but it's enough for me to now, we come here to Ballater. I'm not gonna beep it out anymore. Uh, Ballater in Scotland, absolutely loved it. We've rented a home here and uh, really love it here. So we're probably gonna be staying here. And now we've been traveling for two and a half years. So it was time to find our own place. And I absolutely love it here where it's just surrounded by woodlands, hills, wildlife. Uh, and it's really nice to actually be in one place and you know following the wildlife throughout the year. So I'm looking forward to that. Anyways, <clears throat> keep rambling on there. Uh, yeah, so my day job is, I don't have one, but I do loads of different things. Uh, Lord Strong thinks I'm doing the right thing. Uh, it gets heavy with, uh, he's got a 600 millimeter F4 heavy lens. Yes, but you're probably getting some amazing shots with it. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm still jealous of people who have the, this type of gear, but for me, this point in time it's just not for me so he's looking forward to seeing more videos thank you very much for that alan and jeff katzer good luck with the new gear thank you very much rob j hope you can take us through uh, your learning with the olympus system he's got an em1 mark ii and a 300 uh, f4 so exactly the same gear so struggling a little bit getting the shot uh hopefully i won't disappoint uh yeah keep watching thank you very much for that uh brian parr Welcome to the Micro Four Third World. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, then we got Nikhil, and um, he wish you could buy my 100 400. Uh, I wish you could too, but I'm probably going to sell it soon. Uh, let's see. How is the low light performance using a lens with appropriate F number? Um, low light performance, as I said last video, is not as good as so you have a full frame. Uh, with the appropriate F number, I'm not sure exactly what you mean there. Maybe somebody else does and can help me out. Uh, Sandra McDowell, woohoo! Your channel has become even more interesting to me. Uh, she's been a fan of the channel and excited to see um, now what I can do with a similar setup to Sandra. So hopefully I won't disappoint. Thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, Peter Fogarty, Peter uh, Fogarty, 
Forgati, Forgarty, Peter. Uh, enjoy your new gear. He is using the 70 Mark II and the 100 400. Love, love it. I totally understand that. Uh, awesome vid. When is your next video? Right now. Thank you very much. Uh, Dave Noken. Dave Noken. Love the channel. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I've just done the complete opposite to him. So he's moved away from the exact system that I got. Uh, he says, because couldn't get used to the low ISO that you need to use to get the decent dynamic range. So hopefully uh, I'll get past that. But um, like I said before, if I don't get past it, I'll move away from it. So thank you very much for your comment. Uh, Ian Smith. As you know, the 300 millimeter pro lens is fabulous and the benefits in terms of weight and stabilization are definitely beneficial. Good choice. Thank you, Ian. Uh, Camilla and I, it seems like a good choice for traveling and vlogs, definitely. That's kind of main reasons why I'm doing it. So thank you very much for that. Jim Tipton, can't wait to see my new gear and results. He's got the 100 400 and I was a heavy, I was a huge influence on that decision. Thank you very much for that. And thanks for watching. Take care and thanks for getting me interested in photographing birds. You're welcome. It is good fun. Uh, I hope you're enjoying it. It sounds like you're enjoying it. So happy to hear that. Clive Welsh. Uh, I say each to his own. If you're happy switching gear, then fair play to you. Until the next time, take care, stay safe. Take care, Clive. Thank you for that. John Formston. Uh, he's gone the opposite direction. He's got a Nikon D500 and a 400mm f4. That's, that is a great setup. I'm sure you will have uh, loads of fun with that and get some amazing shots. Uh, also really appreciate you watching. I know you watched like some of my first videos from the beginning and always been commenting and supporting. So thank you very much for that, John. Uh, Ian, Ian H. He is thinking about going from Nikon to Olympus. So, well, now you get to see how it goes with me and then you can take your, um, make your decision after that. Wondering why I didn't go for the Mark III instead of the Mark II. Basically just financial. I didn't have any money set aside to switch gear, so I had to sell all my gear and just buy what I could afford. So starting off with the AM, um, AM1 Mark II and then just gonna have to go from there. Just know that I got a red nose. I can't believe how sunny it's been here. Uh, it's been four days of just blue skies. I saw my first clouds in for four days just uh, today. Crazy. Anyways, I've lost track now. Okay, Graham Kilpatrick. Welcome to the fold. Thank you very much. Um, should get a battery grip and maybe the 4150 2.8. Definitely getting that lens at some point. And yes, telephoto or the 1.4 converter as well. Great channel, keep up the great content. Thank you very much for that, Graham. Uh, Peter, question. How and why did you venture into bird photography as opposed to other genres? So back in 2009, I did my master's in wildlife biology and conservation. And I did my, I uh, did my, I had a summer doing research in South Africa and we would go to different game parks and, um, I was working with a company that would basically translocate animals from one park to another. So they would capture these mammals and it was everything from buffaloes to zebras to giraffes, um, wildebeest, uh, impala, all these, you know, all these different animals. Absolutely amazing experience. And that's what I really love, the large African mammal. That's always what I w thought I wanted to study as well. I just got my first DSLR then as well. It was a Canon 1000D. And I had, a, I think I had a 7300 or something like that on it. So one of the ways we would trap mammals was we would have what is called a boma, which is basically a large funnel with curtains going, I don't even know, maybe a hundred meters down each direction like that. You would have a truck in the back and there was a helicopter flying around and it would basically have a shopping list of animals. Like these are the ones we need. These ones, we want these animals to be translocated to a different, um, different game park because somebody else bought them. Uh, so anyways, sometimes I would be down in, in with the Boma because there were several curtains all along this Boma. And when the helicopter chased the animals up, they would sound the horn. And whoever was standing behind the curtains then had to run across and close the curtains just as the animals very often would try and turn back, but as they saw that curtain, they wouldn't. And then you just kind of funnel them further and further up and close these curtains behind and up to the truck. So it was 
absolutely crazy experience. I uh, loved it. And uh, sometimes though, I mentioned sometimes I would be, sometimes I would be down with the curtains, move them across, but since I really like photography and part of my uh, thesis as well was taking uh, information on the animals. So I would kind of sex them and age them um, for kind of population dynamic studies. Uh, so I would lie on the truck and I would obviously I would lie there with my camera and I got my first really lucky, uh, my one of my favorite moments in wildlife photography uh, I was a herd of uh, impala and the males just coming up front there was a lot of dust in it and they all kind of formed in front of this tree in the background um, and I managed to get a sharp and <laughs> but that was completely lucky I can't remember what I was shooting it was it was it was jpeg so I wasn't even shooting raw uh, it was probably an aperture prior it was probably an aperture priority it was just lucky that I actually froze the action because um, I don't think I really knew what I was doing then and I didn't really I always had a cat and I've always had a DSLR after that for years and years since 2009 but I was never really that into it as a hobby it would some, be something I picked up every now and then you know going on a holiday or something like that it wasn't until maybe three four years ago that I really kind of got more and more into it and now I'm pretty much obsessed anyways uh, so then back then I'd be more interested in the um, the large mammals but even on the masters I would start to explore the birds that were around you know there were ostriches and really cool rollers and all these kind of crazy things that you see that you don't see here um, and after that as well like I just kind of slowly started picking up an interest in birds trying to identify them and the more I kind of learned about them the more I, the more behavior I saw the more I managed to identify and learn about them I just got more and more fascinated about them and they're just they're really, you know, they're really photogenic. A lot of them are really colorful and nice. They got interesting behaviors and they're just, they're everywhere. So they're one of the, you know, easiest but hardest to photograph as well. They're easy because they're everywhere, but they're hard because they just take off at any time as well. So they're quite a challenge and it's quite satisfying. So over the years, I've kind of, I don't know, I've just kind of drifted more into being more interested in birds. And that's partly because as an ecologist as well, I would do much more bird surveys and I would sit on hills in Scotland and you know sometimes I would do surveys for golden eagles and you know peregrines and these kind of things and you just get a, you just get really caught up in it and it's really fun and it's interesting and I think as well the, the challenge of learning birds and learning bird calls and learning bird species is a lot harder than trying to learn mammals I mean mammals are pretty fairly easy you know we have about 4,000 of them total and unless you're going for rodents or something like that you know they're fairly easily distinguished like the larger ones i guess the birds became more of a challenge as well just to learn them and learn about their behavior and that really kind of informed my photography but saying that though i'm not strict i don't consider my strictly a bird photographer um, i photograph all kinds of wildlife and sometimes i'll, I'll photograph other things as well uh, when I went traveling a couple of years ago, I, I would consider myself more of a travel photographer, actually, and I would take photos of you know, everything from street photography to buildings to landscape. Um, but I found, I found my way again and came kind of full circle and back to wildlife um, after I was in Malaysia. Uh, photographing dusky dusky langur I started kind of taking photos of birds again and wildlife and I just I knew then that when I went out and photographed other things like a landscape or you know street photography or anything like that if I didn't come back with a good photo I felt like well that was that was really shit and I didn't feel like good about it but every time I go out take photos of wildlife or I'm in nature I pretty much always feel good about just having gone out and done it in the first place. So that just, that kind of clicked for me then and I was like, ah, yeah, okay. I want to be doing something that I enjoy doing without having to see the, the actual final result. I want to be doing something that really makes me happy without having to get that great image every time because that's not going to happen. So I found out that I'm basically better off enjoying the process rather than just focusing on the results. And that, yeah, brought me back to wildlife photography and bird photography, uh, especially. It's just something I found really rewarding. So sorry for just rambling on there. Just start 
uh, answering some questions and then one thing leads to another and you start remembering things. So uh, just go down a whole track there. So apologies for that, let's move on. Andy's outdoor living, uh, interesting video. Uh, he sold his secondary Nikon gear. He's kept his D500 and he's got a Panasonic GH5. It makes it, makes it better for doing videos. Uh, I've checked out some of your videos on YouTube, by the way, Andy. They're really good. You guys should check them out. Uh, Andy's Outdoor Living, very nice uh, YouTube channel from Sweden. Also, just a shout out to some other YouTubers, some other YouTube wildlife photographers. Um, Paul Miguel, Simon Waltling here in the UK, Ton Vespi in Norway, Morten Helmer in Denmark, uh, Stefano Yaniro, Stefano Yaniro uh, from Canada. He's got a really good channel. He's a videographer as well, so he does amazing footage of birds, and he's often in uh, South America photographing birds and taking videos. So check out those channels. I'll put a link below. Um, I'm sorry if I've forgotten. Uh, there's loads of other good channels out there. I just don't remember them off the top of my head. Uh, I'll give some shout outs again in a future video. Let's see, uh, Robin Hill, welcome to the Olympus family. Don't think you will regret moving. Thanks for that, Robin. Uh, huge, huge Coscarelli. Uh, we all make changes. As obviously your next evolution in your passion of wildlife photography. Thank you very much for that. Say congratulations. I, I just say congratulations. Thank you very much for that. Piston slap. Uh, you made a great choice, mate. Uh, thank you very much. Highly advise getting a battery grip. Yes, I will get that. Um, ba -ba -bum. Uh, Justin Holding. Personally waiting for the EUS R5. I'm sure that'll be a great system as well. Uh, let's see. Scriptosaurus Rex. Brave but commendable. Let's see. Curious, is, uh, curious if you find the Mr. Shelley Adaptive Field option going forward. Looking forward to more content. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for watching. Uh, Pollock Bob, excellent and interesting info. Thank you very much. Uh, no pain, no gain to that. Uh, thanks, Robbie Glasgow. Thank you very much, uh, Robbie from Glasgow. Uh, Doghouse Riley. Love your videos as one of the reasons why I bought the 7D Mark II and the 104. Thank you very much for that. I really hope you get on well with that. Uh, saying, wondering if it's more for a business. Uh, so basically wondering if I did it so that I would have new and fresh content for YouTube with a different system. I really didn't do it for that. I try and focus more on the wildlife in my videos. I do have a few videos where it's a little bit about settings and a little bit about the gear that I have. And there will be a little bit of those videos with this new system as well. But more, it's about the wildlife. Um, and for me, it just makes choice. It has more to do with how I shoot. I travel a lot. I, I hike a lot. I enjoy spending time out in nature. I just don't want to be dragged down by the big system. So yes, there will be uh, a few videos where I show the settings that I use that I think can be helpful because I know I find it helpful because that's what I look up now when I'm trying to get used to the system. Uh, and already I think I've come across a few things that I think are quite good that I'm going to want to share. But that's not why I did it. And it's not my future videos aren't going to be all about Olympus system or anything like that. It's just the gear that I have. And even sometimes I'll put the title of the gear in because that's what I use. But it doesn't mean that the video is actually just on that gear. Unless it unless specifically says review or something. Anyways, uh, yeah. So not about that. Uh, just really... Um, Felt it was time for a change. So I think that's all of them. I'm sorry, we're not gonna get time for going for a wildlife photography walk as well. That's what I wanted to do. But I'll take you guys with me in the next video. And from then on, I, I wanna be doing more videos where it's more about the wildlife photography. So apologies to everyone who don't like these kind of videos. Um, to tell you the truth, I don't even like making them that much. I don't like sitting here just talking. I want to be out in nature, shooting, uh, sharing my wildlife experiences. So I'm looking forward to doing more of that uh, in the future. So next episode, I'll see you back out in the field. So thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.